thread and needles so fine. I'd weave a magic strand of rainbow design. I got tears in my eyes Trying to read a letter from my home If that train runs right I'll see my woman Saturday night Cause I'm 900 miles from my home And I hate to hear that lonesome whistle blow That train I ride on, she's a hundred coaches long. You can hear the whistle blow a hundred miles. If that train runs right, I'll see my woman Saturday night, cause I'm 900 miles from my home. And I hate to hear that lonesome whistle blow. hundred coaches long You can hear the whistle blow a hundred miles If that train runs right I'll see my woman Saturday night Cause I'm 900 miles from my home And if my woman says so I'll railroad no more I'll sidetrack my train and go home If that train runs right I'll see my woman Saturday night Cause I'm 900 miles from my home And I hate to hear that lonesome whistle blow I guess musicians are a kind of a traveling breed, a gypsy kind of life. It's an upside down kind of a way to make a living, you know. You play while other people work and you work while other people play. But uh, as Woody Guthrie once told me, he said, you know, you got, somebody's got to travel in this world. There's a lot of traveling to be done. He says, if I didn't travel, why, you'd have to up and leave your job and you'd have to travel because somebody's got some traveling to do. And I was thinking how the musicians of the old days used to go from castle to castle. And they wouldn't just uh, sing within their own country of Europe. The, a musician wouldn't just sing with the French castles. He'd go from castle to castle. Pretty soon he'd find himself in Germany or Switzerland. Or maybe he'd cross the English Channel and sing in some of the castles of England. So it is that many and many a tune which you and I have heard all our life may have once upon a time been a French song or a German song or an Italian or a Spanish tune. Take this little tune. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Maybe I told you before how it's known in every country of Europe. Mozart was living in France and he heard it made a piano piece out of it. 
In Germany they sing it. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Up in Norway they have a version of it. Ole, ole, Anna. Ole, ole, Anna. Ole, 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 Anna. Same song. A fellow from Sweden said, Oh, we know it, we dance the humba to fellow from the Ukraine once told me. He says, Oh, we know that too. It's uh, just in minor. <laughs> Slow that down, and uh, it's the national anthem of Israel. You see, we're all cousins, and maybe that's what this rainbow quest is all around, all about. Well, these same traveling musicians who took a tune from one part of the world to another are still going on, except nowadays they don't travel. Don't travel on foot or on horseback. They're on trains or airplanes. And they don't go from castle to castle, they go from country to country. I thought I'd introduce one of these men uh, to you here. Uh, I have never met him until today. Usually the various guests we've had on the program, friends of mine from years back, I've known for many years, and we kind of chat about old times. But uh, Alexander Selkin, I never met him before today. He was born in France. His father was a Russian emigre. His mother was French. And in his house, he grew up speaking both languages. Then later on, he went to Israel. Later on, he came to the USA. Now he's living up in Montreal, Canada, because he knows so many French songs, and they got a lot of French people up there that understand him. Down here, it's rougher going. But I, I heard about him. I heard about Alexander Zelkin, and I thought I'd like to hear what he's got to say, hear what he's got to sing. See what stories he's got to tell, what he looks like. So I asked him, called him up on the telephone, said, would you come around and sing? And uh, who knows, maybe we can get together. I know a few Russian songs, not very many. Uh, one the old, we used to do some dancing to. Eastern Europe. which I don't. So in just a few minutes, we'll meet Alexander Zelkin, and we're going to swap songs back and forth, the two of us. He'll sing one, I'll sing one, he'll sing one, and I'll sing one, and we'll see what happens. Alexander Zelkin. Uh, what's the name of that song I was playing anyway? I've heard the well, tune all my life, but I don't know the words. Yes, well, in English it's a Moonshine. Moonshine? Uh, moonshine, yes. And in Russian it's called, it means Moonshine, it's called Svetit Mesits, and it's the most popular dance of, in Russia. Oh, it's known all around the world, it must yeah. be. Boom. Do you know, do you play it on yeah. the guitar?
thought we'd rehearsed that a long time. Yeah, right. Uh, how is it? I knew that you were coming to the ending there. Well, I did. Oh, well, you feel you were feeling it. Yeah, I guess so. I wonder why they call it moonshine. Because, well, uh, I remember when I heard for the first time this, this dance, it was... Uh, I was about 10 years old, and you know, in, in France, there are Russian organizations, and they have summer camps, and during, in those summer camps, there are big orchestras, string ah. orchestras, and they were singing, that when there was the fire camp, the campfire, I'm I sorry, see. they were playing this, and it was always by Munchan, I suppose, that in Russia, they <laughs> always play this in the evening, and when there is the, the rejoicing time in the yeah. village, it's in the evening and during the night. Now, as I understand it, you sing songs in several different languages, am I right? Yes, sir. French songs, too? Yes, French, especially French and Russian, because of my origins. Uh, we'll sing a French song. Then. We'll sing a French song. What kind of song? Well, I'd like to sing a, a very old, old French song from the province of Brittany. It's from the beginning of the 18th century. Uh, this time when, the, you know, the, there were sergeants, recruiting sergeants going around France to pick up men for the armies of the king Louis the 15th and they used to make the, dr the men drunk and when the man was uh, wake, uh, wake, waking up he was in the army and he had to spend 10 15 years in the armies so this is a song uh, about this time it's an old man who says uh, that uh, in Brittany he went to to ask for his son to the captain because the son is in the army and the captain says of course not I will not give the son back <laughs> Saint Michel en grève, mon fils s'en est allé. Allez au capitaine pour le lui demander. Mon vieux, c'est impossible, c'est mon meilleur soldat. Il a touché sa paye, je ne le rendrai pas. Sylvestre, bonjour petit oiseau, va-t'en dire à mon vieux père que son fils revient bientôt. Le vieux bonhomme pleure, couché sur son grand lit. happy hand and the, the sun is coming back, but maybe after 10 years. <laughs> well, let's see. If we're swapping songs, I got one that can match that. Did you ever hear this one? <laughs> this time it's the girl who's mourning for the boy in the army. Here I sit on Buttermilk Hill. Me, oh my, I cry my fill. And all my tears would turn a mill. G, 
Johnny has gone for a soldier I sold my rock I sold my reel To buy my love A sword of steel But now he lies murdered on the field, Johnny has gone for a soldier. My theory is these old songs don't die out because the subject is still with us. I know much about this because it's not a long memory for me. It was not a long time ago when I was living this because I spent, uh, unfortunately, two years during the Algerian war in Algeria. Is that right? And uh, it reminds me also of uh, many you were, songs. You were drafted in the French army? I was, yes. Not for my, my luck. <laughs> ah. And then you found yourself off there fighting and you weren't particularly enthusiastic about Not it? Not at all. <laughs> now, I understand you also lived in Israel. Is it after that? He, well, I went twice <laughs> in Israel. The two times I went hitchhiking, which put me a little bit closer to the troubadours of the, the Middle Age. <laughs> but uh, the first time I went along, alone, and the second time I went with my wife. And Where did you pick her up along the way? <laughs> no, uh, I took her in France. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we stood, the last time we stood eight months, we lived there. The first time I was five months, and the second time eight months, and my daughter was born there. In Israel? In Israel, yes. Do you know an Israeli song? Oh, sure. Uh, let's sing a... Um, Maybe you know this song, it's a cowboy song. It would be, I think it would be the Israeli equivalent of Ghost Riders in the Sky. <laughs> <laughs> it's a song about, like many of the Israeli songs, about the desert of the Negev. And the song is called Arava, or the Song of the Riders. <laughs> See if I can match that. I don't really know many Israeli songs, uh, but oh, the first hit record the Weavers ever had back in 1950 was uh, the song Tsena Tsena. Oh, yeah. And a couple Israelis used to come down to the nightclub where we worked and they coached us in our Hebrew pronunciation. And then Decca made us record it in English. But uh, the Hebrew words fit the tune so much better. I still so always sing it in Hebrew. Have you had that beard all your life? Oh, well, it's a long story, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, before I sing this song, I must yeah, satisfy well, um, my... Because well, you... I'm, I'm envious. I told my family when I get completely bald, I'm going to grow a beard. Well, uh, how long did it take you to grow that? Oh, this length, it takes three, four months. Three well, mo months? I mean the beard, not the mustache. Oh, uh, mustache. How but, long for that? Oh, it, uh, this mustache is three years old. I trimmed it two, three months ago because it was really too long. But the beard has an interesting story. I must tell it to you. Uh, before I went to the army, I used to have a beard. And according to the rules of the French army, if you have a beard entering the army, you are allowed to keep it. But you know, the, it's, the democracy is not always respected. Then, and I knew that I had to shave my beard as, as soon as I get there. So I shaved it before. 
And then when I finished my basic training, uh, I asked for the authorization to grow a beard. And of course, it was refused. So I went to see the doctor, who was a friend of mine. I said to him, you, you just give me a paper, and you say that I cannot shave because I have something on the skin. It hurts me. And he, made a, he wrote a paper for me and allowed me to grow a beard, not to shave. And when the officers were asking me, are you allowed to grow a beard? I said, just look at the paper. I cannot shave. And since that time, I grew a beard. <laughs> How old are you? 28. Oh, good gosh. Here's a man. I'm old enough to be his father, and I'm still clean-shaven. I'm ashamed of myself. Oh, well, I don't have to. I'll get a beard one of these days. Well, now, this Israeli song, I don't know if you know it or not. It has a, it has a nice kind of way you people can join in. I'll show you. I always tell my audiences that if they want to help me on this song, all they need to know is one word. Tena, 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 tena. And get that hand clap. Tena, 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 tena. Hey, let's try it again. Hey, you know, we're still on the subject of wars and soldiers. The, the words, now tell me if I'm right, mean come out, come out, come out, girls from the village, and welcome home the soldiers. Mm -hmm. That's the best sentiment of a all. The second line, I like it. It says, girls, don't be modest. Give them a good welcome. Hey, I see what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll have time for some more songs, but see you in about two minutes. Want something to drink here? I still have. That's all right. Alexander, uh, we haven't heard a Russian song yet. Now, uh, I, I wish I could, I knew the language, uh, but like most Americans, I never really knew any other language but our American form of English. And uh, I went over to Europe a couple years ago and was kind of humiliated to find that everybody over there knew at least two, sometimes three or four more languages. Not only that, in Africa, Asia, the driver of our car in Tanganyika knew seven languages. In uh, Israel, uh, in Indonesia, the average kid in Indonesia knows three languages. He'll know his local language, he'll know the Indonesian national language, and maybe a neighboring language, because each locality has got a different one. And if he visits a few friends 50 miles up the coast, he's got to know a new language. So a couple of years ago, I started trying to learn Russian. Oi, what a language. Six declensions and uh, long words. You know, you go into a restaurant, and instead, I saw a little sign there. In, in America, you'd see a sign saying, uh, table not served. Mm -hmm. There it says, stol nie obsluzhevayetsa. <laughs> obsluzhevayetsa, how many, one, two, three, seven syllables, it means served. Uh, yes, but in this word, you have three American words. D uh, is not being served. Well, all right. It's not being served. Four, four words in one, just one. Well, you, well, you got me there. But all, I felt, gee, I wish I had more short words. Uh, at the same time, I had to admit it was a beautiful language to sing in. 
Yes. It's a beautiful language to sing in. And I tried singing a few songs. I, I, I learned one or two Russian songs, and uh, some translators in Moscow had made a humdinger of a translation of a bawdy old Scottish song I've sung for many years about a man who comes home drunk. <laughs> well, I'll sing you just one verse of it in Russian. <laughs> Раз ночью я пришел домой, был пьян, как стелька я. И в конюшне лошадь увидал, а лошадь не моя. Своей хорошенькой жене сказал супроком я, Зачем чужая лошадь там, где бы должна моя? А где лошадь, видишь ты, шел бы лучше спать? Корова дойная стоит, что привела мне мать. Хоть знаю я весь Божий свет, а бездил все края. Коровы дойной под седлом нигде не видел я. Well, you can imagine how the Russians were laughing. I'll sing the song in English, though. I've heard a hundred different ways to sing this song, and I'll sing it the way I know best. The other night I got home drunk as I could be. I spied a horse in the stable where my horse ought to be. I says to my wife, my pretty little wife, explain this thing to me. What's this horse doing here in the stable where my horse ought to be? Oh, you blind fool, you drunken old fool, can't you plainly see? That's nothing but a milk cow my granny gave to me. I've traveled this wide world over 10,000 miles or more, and a saddle on a milk cow's back I never did see before. The next night I got home as drunk as I could be. I spied a hat on the hat rack where my hat ought to be. I says to my wife, my pretty little wife, explain this thing to me. What's this hat doing here on the hat rack where my hat ought to be? Oh, you blind fool, you drunken fool, can't you plainly see? It's nothing but a chamber pot my granny gave to me. I've traveled this wide world over 10,000 miles more, and a J.B. Stetson chamber pot I never did see before. The next night I come home as drunk as I could be. I spied some pants upon the chair where my pants ought to be. I says to my wife, my pretty little wife, explain this thing to me. What's these pants doing here upon the chair where my pants ought to be? Oh, you blind fool, you drunken fool, can't you plainly see? It's nothing but a dish rag my granny give to me. I've traveled this wide world over 10,000 miles or more, and zippers on a dish rag I never did see before. Last night I got home as drunk as I could be. I spied a head on the pillow where my head ought to be. I says to my wife, my pretty little wife, explain this thing to me. What's this head doing here on the pillow where my head ought to be? You blind fool, you drunken fool, can't you plainly see? It's nothing but a cabbage head my granny gave to me. I've traveled this wide world over 10,000 miles or more, but a mustache on a cabbage head I never did see before. Well, they translated the whole thing into Russian. And they and collapsed with laughter. <laughs> yeah, and I swear some of the words, some of the lines come out better in Russian than they do in English. Like where we say, I spied a head on the pillow. They simply say, Gilad, Padushka, Galava. <laughs> right. Three words. Look, pillow, head. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a beautiful language, and, and maybe someday I'll learn it better. Well, you know it. Will you sing me a song all the way through it? Oh, yes. Uh, I must sing a, a gay song now, I suppose. Uh, there is one which, has, which is very old uh, and uh, which has been very popularized now in Russia by many, many uh, ensembles. And uh, it's about a young man who is going down the river and he is looking for somebody to comb his hair. And first person he finds is you an know, old woman. She comes the hair, but she's just pulling the hair and it's very painful. So he throws the woman away and he finds a young one who comes the hair very softly. 
and as a reward, she's just asking for a kiss. I don't believe it. You go on. <laughs> Exact, the exact uh, undertones. No, no, it's exactly this. Maybe yeah. you can have the interpretation you want. Uh, you Western people, you have such a, a sick mind. <laughs> well, maybe that's true, but I always had a feeling that a good song meant many different things. Uh, the, the more you knew about the background of it, the more, like for example, now somebody in a city might hear a cowboy song and uh, He'd say, well, isn't that a pretty song about the plains? But without knowing cowboy life, he couldn't really understand it. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the pain, the danger, it may be a happy sounding song, yeah. but there are, there are things the song doesn't say explicitly, which yeah. are, are mm -hmm. nevertheless meant in that. Well, you can it, interpret it as, 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 you, as you like it. Yeah. You know, maybe uh, we Russian people are so naive. <laughs> Uh, have you been in Russia yourself? Uh, unfortunately, never. The closer I've been to Russia was Bulgaria. Uh -huh. but, uh, they got like a lot of good music there. Oh, wonderful music. But, you know, this kind of music is for, especially for chorus music. Uh, there are some ensembles which are wonderful. And I know, for instance, and you certainly know, the Philippe Kutyov ensemble. They are singing Bulgarian songs and the harmonies are so particular, something very different from what we are used to here. Mm. And you have been in Russia, and you, you certainly know Russian songs. Well, I don't know them well, but this, this song I heard speaking of choruses from a wonderful chorus, the Pyatnitsky Chorus. Mm -hmm. And the song was made up back 22 years ago. At the time, the Hitler's troops were coming in. And before they were kicked out, 30 million people were dead. And so it's not a happy song, but I found it, it, uh, was, it had very deep meaning for people. Let me get up, put the key up higher. Oh, 
Partisans are starting out on the march. At parting, they said, you can expect good news from us. And on the old Smolensk road, they met the uninvited guests. reminds me of many Russian songs which were written in the same period. But I, I think of another song which could be the following of this song. It's about the Russian army coming back from the war mm. where they, they had the victory over Germany. And, and the, the last verse is a warning which says, let our enemy remember this. We don't shout, but we just warn them. We have been all around the world. And if we need to, we shall do it again. It's called the foreword. Пусть далек у нас с тобою Весели солдат гляди Бьется, бьется с нами полковой командир
ветер возовет солдаты. Враги запомнят твердо, не глядим, а говорим. Мы прошли, прошли с тобой по света, если нужно, повторим солдаты. Для тебя, родная, есть почта полевая, прощай, труба зовет солдаты. Time for a few more songs. Stick around about two minutes. Us two traveling musicians have a few more songs. Alexander Zelkin, I'm going to sing a song which uh, I learned the words of out of a book of poetry written by a Welch coal miner. And it seemed to me the words would have meaning for anybody in the whole world, even though he was talking about the bells in the little coal mining towns of his home. Oh, what will you give me, sang the sad bells of Remni. Is there hope for the future? Say the brown bells of Mathel. Who made the mine owner say the black bells of Randa? And who robbed the miner say the grim bells of Blyna? They will plunder willy nilly. Say the bells of Kefili. They have fangs, they have teeth. Shout the loud bells of Neath. Even God is uneasy. Say the moist bells of Swansea. And what will you give me? Sang the sad bells of Rim. Throw the vandals in court Say the bells of Newport All would be well if, 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 if Say the green bells of Cardiff Why so worried, sisters, why Sang the silver bells of why Will you give me sang the sad bells of room? Say the brown bells of Mephel. Even God is uneasy. Say the moist bells of Swansea. And who made the miner? Say the grim bells of Lyna. Throw the vandals in court. Say the bells of Newport All would be well if, 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 if. Say the green bells of Card Why so worried, sisters, why Sang the silver bells of why Oh, what will you give me 
sang the sad bells of Rimini. It's your turn. It reminds me of uh, how old is this song? I mean, well, the, he the wrote words. it 30 years ago, 40, 30 years. 35 years ago. It reminds of, uh, me of uh, the same mood of a song which was written in France less than three years ago. And uh, it's, uh, it was written by a singer, a folk singer of France, who would be the French Bob Dylan, hmm? just 10 years hmm. older, Jean Ferrat. And he's uh, singing and composing angry songs. And the song I was thinking about was. Uh, it's all a program by its title. It's Night and Fog in German, Nachts and Nebel. It's about uh, the victims of the concentration camps. And it ends like this. It says that uh, people say now it's too late to sing this kind of songs, but who will prevent me from singing them? I would twist the word if I had to for the children to know who were those people. <laughs> Des milliers, des émègres tremblant dans des wagons plombés, qui déchiraient la nuit de leurs ongles battants. Ils étaient des milliers, ils étaient vaincants. Ils se croyaient des hommes, n'étaient plus que des nombres. Depuis longtemps, leur adé avait été jeté. Dès que la main retombe, il ne reste qu'une ombre. Ils ne devaient jamais plus revoir un été. Encore une heure, un jour obstinément Combien de tours de roue d'arrêts et de départs Qui n'en finissaient pas de distiller l'espoir Il s'appelait Jean-Pierre, Natacha ou Samuel Certains priaient Jésus, Jéhovah ou Vishnu D'autres ne priaient pas, mais qu'importe le ciel Ils voulaient simplement ne plus vivre à nous. Ils n'arrivaient pas tous à la fin du voyage Ceux qui sont revenus peuvent-ils être heureux Ils essaient d'oublier et donner qu'à leur âge Les veines de leur bras soient devenus si bleus Les Allemands guettaient du haut des miradors La lune se taisait comme un vous boutaisiez En regardant au loin, en regardant dehors Votre chair était tendre, alors chien policier On me dit à présent que ces mots n'ont plus cours Il vaut mieux ne chanter que des chansons d'amour Que le sang sèche vite en entrant dans l'histoire Et qu'il ne sait pas rien de prendre une guitare Mais qui donc a de taille à pouvoir m'arrêter Leur bois s'est fait humaine, aujourd'hui c'est l'été Je twisterai les mots, s'il fallait les twister Pour qu'un jour les enfants, c'est ce qui vous est dit Vous étiez vaillissants, vous étiez des milliers Maigre tremblant dans des wagons flambés, qui déchiriez la nuit de vos ongles battants. Vous étiez des milliers, vous étiez vaincants. Mm -hmm. Ah, well, we got to travel on. Uh, let's end with a happier song. This is a dance tune, everybody knows it. The Russian peddler going down the road. He's yeah. <laughs> full of it. Double entendre, he says, take pity, baby, on this young man's shoulder, my pack I must carry. But he says, across the road, in the dark ride tonight, I'll uh, wait for you, and when I see those dark eyes, I'll display all my merchandise. Oh, oh, wait a I must ask you, before the program's over, who makes your sweaters? My wife. And who made yours? My wife. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's the chief cook and bottle washer on this program, you know. <laughs> Oh, had I a golden thread 
and needle so fine. I'd weave a magic strand of rainbow design. Oh, of rainbow design. In it I'd weave the bravery of women giving birth. In it I'd weave the innocence of children over all the earth. Children of all earth, far over the waters, I'd reach my magic band to every city, through every single land, through every land. Show my brothers and my sisters. My rainbow design. Bind up this old world with hand and heart and mind. Hand and heart and mind. Oh, had I a golden thread and 